Um, Janet, I, I'm going to begin. Thank you uh, for applying for this uh, redistricting uh, committee. And my, uh, we're all going to ask questions. Uh, we're all going to ask you questions and be mindful. You have about 15 minutes, and so be mindful of your the time for answering. And we'll try to be mindful as we ask questions. So um, here is the first question, Janet. What is your understanding of the scope of the redistricting uh, committee in terms of specific districts that you would deal with? In other words, is it congressional, county, city, precincts, or all that I've listed? Well, we're doing everything in Clark County. So in Clark County, you would be doing the um, the precincts, the LDs, and um, I'm really not sure that you would do the congressional thing because I think all of Clark County is going to be included in one district. Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry I was on mute. Um, your second question is that we will select four individuals, as you know, uh, to serve on this committee. And what will their relationship be to the redistricting master? And then what is the redistricting master's job? The relationship to the committee would be to work together cohesively to come up with a plan that would be good for the residents of Clark County. And then to the master is the one who's trying to see overall everything, trying to make sure the state is equally uh, portioned. Could you expand on that a little bit, please? Well, I know that there's there's been a problem in the way it was redistricted last time because the tribes were split in half and we have cities that are split in half. And so they're trying to make it I believe much more cohesive so that you have like here, like the city of battleground would be hopefully in one area and one LD as opposed to being in split in two. And you have the, um, I think the city of Vancouver is now split into three different legislative districts. And just trying to make it, um, I know the people in Washougal and, um, Camus wanted to be in one area because they share a port. So you're just trying to manage similar interests and still trying to apportion the state. Thank you. Good morning, Janet. Tough duty in Schofield Barracks. Uh, hope you've recovered from that. Uh, yeah, it was a hardship tour in Hawaii. <laughs> I had yeah, a great we'll time. We'll have to talk sometime about that in the future. Uh, what is your personal goal in being selected as a member of the redistricting committee? I wanted to bring both my understanding of American government and my judicial background and trying to use equity and balancing different ideas and trying to formulate consensus. Thank you. Um, hi, hi, Janet. This is uh, this is Councillor Lentz. And to follow up on that question, could you please talk a little bit about your knowledge and experience and how that makes you a qualified candidate for the redistricting committee? Okay. Um, well, my my knowledge of the redistricting committees, I sat in on a state meeting on the subject, and I also attended one of the um, online listening sessions that they held for the um, for our area. And so having heard how the people wanted, like the Republicans that lived in the 49th, wanted the 49th to be more competitive. And so I, it was just listening to the different areas of people's concerns and trying to be objective neutral, objective, fair to everyone because, um, I mean, I've been here now six, I think it's five or six years, so I'm not like 
locked in that it has to look a particular way. Great, thank so you. So I thought my skills yeah. with, um, when I was a judge, I had the reputation for being the most fair to the people by applying the law and trying to come out with a reason that I could award benefits within the law. So. Thank you. Okay, Janet, <clears throat> this is Eileen Quirin O'Brien uh, once again. And I one final question is, uh, this com committee needs to meet soon and regularly once, once they start meeting. Do you have any concerns about the time commitment in order to meet the deadlines? No, I'm retired and so I have a pretty free schedule. Okay, thank you very much. Um, okay. Unless there are any follow-up questions by counselors, I think I think uh, we've asked you the questions that we need, and our intent today is to select two of the five from the Democrat Party as well as two of the five from the Republican Party, and uh, you'll get a notice. <laughs> okay, thank you so or, much. Or you can uh, actually, we'll be signing into a meeting at the end of this if you would want to listen in. So thank okay. you. Okay. So Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye. Um, Rebecca, by chance, is our next person in the waiting room? Here, let me check with a call, uh, caller here to see if perhaps Mr. Anderson. I am a member of the public listening in. I am not a candidate. Okay, thank you so much. Chair, it doesn't appear Mr. Anderson is here just yet. Okay, thank you. We can just use our time uh, by looking at the uh, resumes, et cetera. Chair, I see Mr. Anderson is arrived. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Anderson, are you ready to commence? Ah, there you yes. are. Hi, Hi, welcome. Thank you. Well, uh, thank you so much for applying for the redistricting committee. And uh, we're all five, all four of us are gonna ask you um, a question, you've got about 15 minutes for this interview, so 
way, you know, manage your time uh, with the answers to these questions. They shouldn't be too complicated. So, <laughs> okay. great. I will start with the first question. What is your understanding of the scope of the redistricting committee in terms of specific districts that you will be dealing with? Congressional, uh, county, city, precincts, or all of, all of that has just been stated. Got it. Thank you. Uh, well, as I understand it, uh, this redistrict commission will be focused on the county council level and on county districts. Uh, you know, as I understand it, um, of course, it is the duty of this redistricting commission to take into account smaller political subdivisions when making these new county council lines, but that our uh, scope of focus is solely on the county council level. You know, the congressional district that's left off uh, to the state redistricting committee as well as um, our state legislative districts and uh, cities already have their own boundaries and their own plans for growth. So it is our job as the county redistricting committee to focus on the county districts. Thank you. Somebody mutes me and then I don't catch it. Sorry. <laughs> so um, this is your next question and um, I think you will find this uh, very uh, direct. We will select four individuals, as you know, to serve on this committee. What is their relationship? What will be their relationship to the redistricting master? And then what is the job of that redistricting master? Gotcha, thank you. As I understand it, it's the job of the redistricting master to have the qualifications to produce the maps. You know, they, they're basically the professional, um, the very qualified person in this process. And it is up to our redistricting commission uh, committee to work with them, um, you know, to, uh, it's up to the committee to, you know, uh, deliberate and produce maps um, and work in conjunction with the expert in the room uh, to make sure that everything we're doing is going to meet uh, state legislation requirements as well as state case law established uh, regarding this process and to make sure that the final map produced by this committee will be upheld by state law and uh, won't be um, reverted to other parts of the system. So, you know, it's our job as the redistricting committee members to work with that expert to collaborate together with one another and to uh, find common ground in order to move forward maps that will be compliant with state law. Very good, thank you. Good morning, John Gary Mevji here. Good morning. What is your personal goal in being selected as a member of the redistricting committee? Great, thank you for asking. Um, I, I suppose I'll start by saying that I, I've long had, uh, you know, interest in civics, making sure that the voice of each American is fairly weighed. And I, I think that really plays into this whole process and what this process is about, you know, um, I, not to get too deep into it, but as somebody who, uh, you know, going into their political um, career and political interest, you know, I, I just really wanted to make sure that the voice of common Americans was fairly represented in our political process and our policy making process. Um, you know, to make sure that the average everyday person had a say and to make sure that we value that standard and um, uphold uh, those democratic values by ensuring one person, one vote. We need to make sure that we are producing fair electoral districts and not just districts that are going to be fair um, when they go into effect in 2022, but districts that will remain fair for the next 10 years. So uh, it's my goal as an applicant in this process to bring that sort of mindset, uh, you know, to really emphasize the fact that regardless of somebody's political affiliation or compass, one person, one vote is the standard that we need. And to do that, we need to make districts that are, um, you know, rel relatively the same in size as close as possible. We need to also be thinking about keeping communities together and making sure that folks are fairly represented, that we're not splitting apart communities. Uh, and we also need to be making sure that we have a uh, the future in mind, you know, that we're looking at the uh, past and current trends in growth and development in Clark County, where population is decreasing or increasing, and take that into account as we draw these new lines so we don't end up with um, imbalanced districts five years from now. 
uh, because oops, you know, one is where all the population's going to and the others aren't, because all that's going to do is, uh, you know, end up diluting votes over time. So I really think that it's the duty of myself and anyone who's a part of this process to um, work to rebuild faith in our democracy, to work collaborative, collaboratively with one another, and to just really um, come at this process with the idea of fairness and knowing that uh, you know it, it does a disservice to every voter if voices aren't being heard, if votes are being diluted, or if communities are being split apart. So I hope that answers your question. If you need clarification, oh. please let me know. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Hi, John. Hi. Um, so the next question, uh, sort of a follow on to that. Uh, could you please describe your knowledge and experience uh, and how it makes you a qualified candidate for the redistricting committee? Yeah, great. Thanks, Temple. Um, uh, yeah, so I would just say that um, uh, quite a bit of this year I've spent focused on the redistricting process. Um, my work with Clark County Forward, which is a uh, nonpartisan pack here in Clark County, focused around voter education, turning out infrequent voters, and as I mentioned earlier, really believing that democracy works best when everyone votes. Um, this year, we've been pretty focused on the redistricting process, you know, knowing that that is a big part of making sure everyone's vote is equally weighed and counted. So since January, um, I've been looking over uh, data for Clark County, um, demographic data, you know, age groups, things like that. We've been mapping data as well, looking at population changes, I mentioned. And um, also us at Clark County Forward, um, myself included, have been doing quite a bit of legal research, uh, you know, just looking over, as I mentioned earlier, um, case law and legislation that um, is relevant to the redistricting process. Now, uh, as, as an employee of this organization, I've mostly been focused on um, the state level and legislative district level, but uh, a lot of these same legal standards apply all the way down to other subdivisions. So, um, you know, as somebody who has been thinking about these legal arguments, has been studying the legislation and case law, you know, I, I think that that gives me uh, a bit of a leg up in understanding this process and having a working knowledge going in, just knowing that to produce boundaries uh, that are going to stand up to legal muster, uh, you know, us. Uh, or potential counselors need to be taking into consideration the size and compactness of districts to make sure that districts, uh, you know, aren't diluting votes by having odd shapes that split up communities. We need to be thinking of the variability of districts uh, to ensure that, you know, we are reaching that one person, one vote standard. If districts vary in size, that means uh, unequal representation um, for people in various council districts. That means uh, inequality when it comes to voting and electing those representatives as well. Um, you know, counselors also need to be thinking about uh, considerations such as, as I mentioned before, pre-existing geographical boundaries, as well as pre-existing political subdivisions to make sure that we're not, uh, you know, put, building um, districts that are going to split people across rivers, highways, or other impassable boundaries. And just as somebody who's been thinking about this for, you know, most of the last eight months, I think that that gives me a, a good working knowledge to, um, you know, enter this process with an open mind and having some tools already in my belt in terms of knowing what is expected of uh, committee members in this process and what is expected for the maps that we put forward at the end of the day uh, to stand up and to, you know, not need to go to the court systems or, or come back to us for any amendments. So I just think because of that work that I've already been doing and the fact that um, I also have already uh, prepared and submitted testimony to the state redistricting commission um, just shows that this process has been very much on my mind. I've been taking it seriously and I very much look forward to, uh, you know, delving into the census data that came out just last week and really taking a look at what that's going to mean for Clark County and our Clark County Council districts. Great, thank you. Thank you. Uh, John, I've, I've got the last question, although if we have time, I do, I ha have a follow up question, but okay. this one is uh, the committee, as you know, <laughs> I can tell, you know, already uh, they're going to, you're going to meet soon and often. And I'm just want to be sure if you have any concerns about time commitment and, um, you know, in order to meet your deadlines, they're going to be pretty tight deadlines. So. Yeah, um, thank you. I definitely understand that we're under crunch, especially this year with the census data coming out later than it has typically. 
Um, that said, I, I'm fully ready to be a part of this process. You know, I, I have a fairly, uh, I, I kind of make my own schedule when it comes to work. So I know that um, I'm going to be able to balance my other responsibilities with this one, should I be chosen for this redistricting committee. Um, so I, I fully intend to be uh, completely available, completely on board and completely dedicated to this process, should I be selected. Thank you. And if you don't mind, counselors, I just want to ask one more question, which is because he's mentioned it a couple of times, the Clark County Forward. Can you tell me just a little bit more about this organization? Yeah, definitely. I'd be happy to. Uh, so, as I mentioned, it is a uh, nonpartisan PAC. Um, you know, uh, it's been in existence for, uh, I've been a part of it since last January. So, just under a year and a half now. Um, it was created about a half a year or so before that, and our focus is just on turning out infrequent voters, knowing that uh, a lot of outreach campaigns to voters, you know, whether it be candidate campaigns or issue based campaigns or things like that, they, they tend to focus on people who are already pretty likely to vote. You know, um, I, I think, you know, everyone here is run for office. Uh, so I, I think you'd all understand that as you're running for office, uh, your, your time is valuable. You know, you want to be talking to people you're pretty certain are going to vote so you can win over those votes. And, and at Clark County Forward, we really want to make sure that we're bringing other people off of the sidelines. You know, you've heard me mention before that we believe democracy works best when everyone votes. So it, it's a big part of our mission to reach out to folks who've been voting less frequently or who are less informed voters. Um, you know, we, we don't want voters to feel like they're only spoken to once every two or four years, once it's election time. So we try to go out there and do the year round work of letting people know what's going on with the electoral process, whether it be upcoming general, primary, special elections, the redistricting process, just making ourselves, uh, you know, as much as we can, a, a nonpartisan um, sort of uh, tool and educational outlet to voters. And in our voter outreach, we specifically reach out to voters who have been voting in half or fewer uh, of the last few primaries and general elections. So really targeting those people who are voting less frequently, as we're calling them, we, we never urge people who are what to vote for. Um, we just try to connect over shared issues and encourage everyone to vote. Um, because, you know, as I mentioned, we truly believe that for democracy to work, everyone needs to be voting regularly. And I think the more we can um, instill that message in people, the more we can rebuild a bit of confidence. Um, you know, as we see more of our neighbors participating in this process or more people um, putting faith into this process. So th that's a bit of what we're about. Thank you so much, John. I appreciate it. Thanks mm -hmm. for your application. And uh, we will be making a decision today on all four of the members. Um, so we look forward to that a little later today after the interviews. Thanks. Well, I, I really appreciate uh, you having me here. Thank you for the opportunity. And uh, yeah, I appreciate everything you do as well. Thank you, John. Take care. Thanks. Here. We have uh, Ms. Myers here. Okay, thank you. One second. Good morning, all. And if you see here, kid music playing in the background is because I'm watching my two grandkids today, so I apologize ahead of time. <laughs> we are all trying to make it through, right? <laughs> right. Thank you. Well, if it's a baby first uh, video, then it's a match for what I have going on. Oh! <laughs> Okay, uh, since Shannon is here, we might as well get started. Is everybody ready to get started? Okay, 
Uh, welcome, Shannon. Thank you for your uh, for applying for this position. We're each going to ask a, a question of you, and I'll follow up with a final if we have time. It's about your interview will be about 15 minutes long, so you know um, budget your time accordingly. Uh, they aren't really complicated questions, so um, I will begin by asking you what is your understanding of the scope of the redistricting committee in terms of specific districts you would deal with. For instance, is it congressional, county, city, precincts, or all that I've just listed? Um, actually, I would I would work on all uh, specifically. Um, I'm not sure if you guys know, but um, I'm president of the Southwest Washington Central Labor Council, so I'm representing over 50 union locals and 15,000 union members. And although I personally am a Democrat. I represent working people. Working people are Democrats, Republicans, and independents. So what my goal is, is to look at all of the districting, because what I have found in Clark County from being a union leader is that it has become very partisan. All of our districts have become extremely partisan. And that's one thing I think that we should fix um, as part of this committee. Because when you become partisan, then that means communication is gone. So, for example, a lot of people may think that the labor movement is primarily Democrat, but we have certain issues that we deal with that a lot of times Democrats align with. But that does not mean that we support just Democrats. The problem is, is that I now have no relationship with my Republican representatives. They won't return phone calls. They don't attend our meetings when we ask them to. And so that partisan politics is actually shutting down communication on how we can work together. So I'm hoping with redistricting, we may be able to solve some of those partisan situations, but we need to look at more than just the legislative, um, you know, the, the politics that affect my members every day, for the most part is local politics. And so I think that's just as important, if not more important than the legislative. Okay, thank you very much. Next question. We will select four individuals, as you know, to serve on this committee. What will their relationship be to the redistricting master? And what is that redistricting master's job? Well, as far as I understand it, is that we actually agree on I don't know if we choose the, the redistricting master, but basically we work with that, that person that is appointed um, and we as a team work with them on how we feel about the districts and what we feel should be changed. And that, that person goes and actually draws up some redistricting based on our recommendations and then they come back and we take a look at it and I'm assuming that there'll be some kind of vote and then we move forward uh, from there. But I don't know what the process is after that. Um, but as far as what I know is basically we're picking a, a captain that knows what they're doing with the redistricting and we're giving them our concerns, ideas and thoughts so that they can implement that into their work. That's Thank my you. understanding. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Uh, what is your personal goal in being selected as a member of the redistricting committee? Well, the, the, my personal goal, honestly, is to have a voice at the table for working people. Um, we have certain issues that that we align with, um, primarily dealing with uh, wages, working conditions, getting jobs and hours, those types of things. Um, but that deals that has to happen based on communication with our electeds um, because we have local electeds who are out there trying to find companies to come into this area to put our people to work, but we need good living wage jobs, not you know retail jobs that pay minimum wage. So um, I guess my personal goal is to bring the voice of labor um, and also all working people, because although we represent certain members, uh, we actually work to lift all working people up. And so I'm hoping that I could have a voice for working people on that board. Thank you. Good morning, Shannon. Morning. Um, 
Please describe how your knowledge and experience make you a qualified candidate for the redistricting committee. Oh, well, um, I'm a political geek, obviously, uh, with being in uh, the labor movement, you fight for working people. So you have to stay on top of everything that has to do with politics. And although people don't like politics, uh, for the most part, I guess they say, ah, politics, it's terrible. No, in order for us to have a community that grows and thrives for everyone, you have to be involved with politics. So, you know, I'm kind of a political geek. Um, I think the other thing that I can do is, you know, I have a degree in marketing and economics, um, and I've been in my field for, 25 years now. Um, and so I think bringing my, I've also been a manager. Um, I've overseen five states at some times with 20 different personnel um, because we actually have public relations people in different states. So I've done that. Um, and just being a labor leader, my, you know, being a leader is that you have to invite people on a journey and not force them to follow. And so me having those skills of team building and working together, I've grown my labor council, you know, tenfold in the years that I've been there. Um, and part of that is because we, we work together. Um, we work, find out people's issues. We support them on those issues and by supporting them, they turn around and support us. So I think that my team building, my business, uh, experience, um, and my leadership experience over the last 25 years, uh, will definitely put me in a good spot on this uh, committee. Thank you. Okay. A uh, 1 final question, Shannon is sure. this committee is going to meet soon. Mm -hmm. And. You're going to need to meet regularly. Do you have any concerns at all about a time commitment in order to meet the deadlines, which are going to be very quick? Mm -hmm. um, actually, no, I, I like to tell people I'm on maternity leave, even though my daughters are 17 and 15. Uh, that's because I had during the COVID crisis, I actually left my employment and um, I've decided to stay at home for my daughter's senior year and help raise some of my grandbabies because uh, daycare and rent is out of control and they can't make it. And so I've decided to take off a year um, to help out my family. So I will have time. Which also includes my community, obviously, because I'm trying to get on this, this committee. <laughs> great, great. Thank you so much. We appreciate your application for this and taking time to uh, uh, interview for this position. We do intend today to make a decision on the 4 individuals who will sit on this committee. So uh, stay tuned. All right. Thank you. Well, so much. I appreciate all the work that you do for our community. And um, if you guys ever have any questions about where working people uh, are, please know that I'm available. Have a wonderful you. day, you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye. bye, -bye.
Rebecca, is uh, Mr. Travis the call in perhaps, or is this just the public member still? Uh, I believe the public member. Let me check with the new caller though. To... Hello, caller. Yes. Hi, are you just listening today? I'm just listening, and it was silent for so long that I hung up and then dialed back in. Oh, we're, we're just waiting for the next interview. Thank you. That's that's what I figured. Yeah. No, I'm I'm just a member of the public listening. Appreciate it. So are we, Madam Chair, are we in the situation where basically someone hasn't signed in? Uh, should we just move on? To Actually, he, well, he, he has a 1045, so he's, we're ahead of schedule. Okay. It's possible, uh, Rebecca or Tina, if you, maybe give a heads up to the other applicants that they're run we're running a little ahead of time and if they can sign on and be in a waiting room or something for you know maybe 10 minutes before their appointment if they're able that would be great yes tina's going to go do that right now and we do have okay. a new caller um caller are you here to listen applicants uh, is this Mr. Travis? It is indeed. Okay, great. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, Mr. Travis, welcome. This is Eileen Quarren. And uh, we'll just begin the interview since uh, since you're here <laughs> a couple minutes early oh. and, and we're running it. Okay. Uh, so, uh, what is your understanding? Actually, we're all going to ask questions. And so, uh, I'll just start with the questioning. I'm sorry, I didn't instruct you that way earlier, but uh, that's fine. And you have 15 minutes for this interview. And so, you kind of uh, judge with your answers how long you take those so that we complete them in time. Although we've run ahead. So, <laughs> they're pretty simple questions. All right. Uh, 
All right. First question is, what is your understanding of the scope of the redistricting committee in terms of specific districts you would deal with? In other words, the congressional district, county district, city, or precincts, or all that I've listed. Um, I am, it's my understanding that it would be for the third congressional district. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I, I'm going to sign off and let the next person ask the question. Okay, your second question is, I need to grab my glasses here. <clears throat> um, we would <clears throat> select four individuals, as, as you know, to serve on this committee, two Republicans and two uh, Democrats that we select. And what will their relationship be to the redistricting master? And what is the redistricting master's job? Well, the redistricting ma manager's job is to analyze the Census Bureau from the last census and determine um, how many people there are in the district, and then to redraw the lines to um, accommodate um, population changes um, as well as demographic changes in the district. That is my understanding. What is um, the committee's relationship to that redistricting master? The committee will, um, it's my my understanding that we will make recommendations based on our findings to the master as to what we believe uh, as the districting committee uh, that the boundaries should be of the district. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Councillor Mevji here. What is your personal goal in being selected as a member of the redistricting committee? I, uh, I love being involved in community affairs and particularly in politics. I've been involved for a lot of years and the process, uh, I'm in awe of the process, the individual um, input that you can have and make changes on a much larger basis based on how much time and effort you're willing to put into a project. And that's uh, that's what I'm hoping to do here. Hi, Bob. This is Temple Lentz. Hi, uh, Temple. Hi. Could you please describe you, how your knowledge and experience makes you a qualified candidate for the redistricting committee? Well, as I said, I've been involved in, as a volunteer in politics for many years, and in my career prior to retirement, I was involved in. Um, district and regional and store management in a pretty competitive business in the wireless communications industry. And because of its, its competitiveness, it's also fairly, um, I don't want to use the word, but cutthroat for lack of a better word. And over the years, I discovered uh, ways to overcome the competitiveness and the objections and be able to bring people to a shared conclusion that was often a compromise, but it was acceptable to everybody. And I, I see that as being a good, a good skill to be on the committee where we've got differing viewpoints uh, to try and either be part of getting to the middle or helping get to the middle where we can uh, achieve a, uh, a product that everybody is okay with. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Travis, again, this is uh, Chair O'Brien. Uh, this committee will need to meet soon and regularly and i i'd like to know if you have any concerns at all with your uh time commitment in order to meet these deadlines i don't uh, one of the advantages of, of being retired is that i have a pretty pretty uh open schedule um and you know there might be um uh, well friday afternoons at three is a is a, a commitment that i have but other than that my days are open during the week Thank you. Um, I, I don't know if there are any follow up questions of the, of the council at all. Head shaking no. Uh, so, having said that, uh, Mr. Travis, we do plan on uh, making our choice today of the 2 individuals from each party and we will let you know uh, the outcome. So, thank you again for uh, participating in this and in this interview and for. Uh, putting your application forward for this committee. Thank you all for taking the uh, opportunity to chat with me and I hope to hear from you soon. 
Thank you so much. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye now. Here, this is Rebecca again. Uh, Gina is currently working on uh, getting in touch with folks. So looks like the next one isn't until 11, but hopefully that happens. Yeah, soon. that's great. Yeah, we'll, we understand <laughs> they had appointments. Uh -huh. so, uh, if she, if she is in trouble, that's, that's fine. We'll, we'll muddle through. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So um, when's the next, I'm wondering if I have a couple of minutes, I'm kind of fuming here. I have phone calls I need to make and I'm sitting here. Uh, is the next one gonna start at 11 or? I don't know if Tina was able to get in touch with anybody. So I, I, I just a minute to run down the hall, but I wouldn't, I would not, uh, because we're trying to uh, get these people on earlier, I wouldn't, take too much time, I'd say five minutes at the max.
Gary, if you can do something in five minutes, that'd be good. Counselors, this is Tina. I have emailed the rest of the interviewees to ask them to get on a little bit earlier than normal because we're running, uh, you know, faster. Um, so okay. The, uh, All right. Next one is at eleven o'clock. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, Tina. I, you know, I understand these people probably set aside this time and may not be able to do it sooner. They, I know the next one has a job, so, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, thanks. Hello. Hello. They dropped off. Did something happen? <laughs> oh. Uh, yeah, she'll be trying again. Hello, we see you now. Good morning. How you doing? Hey. Good morning. Hey, how are you guys doing? Yes. Doing well. <laughs> doing I Madam doing Chair. Well. Yes. Right. I, uh, thank you for joining us a little bit early. We uh, sure. we're running we're running uh, ahead of time. So okay, good. Okay. <laughs> but I I just want to welcome you. Thank you for uh, participating in this interview process and also participating yeah. uh, in um, your desire to be on this committee. We're so, all going to ask a question of you. I'll probably follow up with a final question, but yeah. let me begin by asking this first. What is your understanding of the scope of the redistricting committee in terms of 
the specific districts that you'll deal with congressional county city precincts or all that i've just listed yeah so um i had been talking with a few individuals and my understanding of it is the population and ensuring that each district is divided up equally so that way there's not like no advantage from one district to another um uh, I actually sat in on one of the redistricting meetings uh, actually last night, and uh, I was taking all that in, and I didn't uh, I didn't realize that I also had to do with the LDs as well. Um, so uh, I've been uh, speaking with uh, other individuals who know about the redistricting and kind of learning from them. I still obviously have a lot to learn, but um, I think I by them rubbing off on me and the resources that I have, I think I'll be able to get up to speed pretty quickly. Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I'd like you to regroup on that question for just a moment, if you don't sure. mind. I'm sure. not sure that I understood if if you uh, would be working on the congressional districting, like the third CD or precincts or city or county. Which which districts would you think that it would be focusing on? I thought it was going to be focusing on the districts here within uh, uh, Clark County. So district one, two, three, and four. That was my I understanding. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. That's Thank you. Good. So now let's go to, I didn't catch that. At the okay, first. okay, good. Yeah, sure. okay. <laughs> <laughs> so now let's so, go to the second question. Sorry, I love it. Um, we will select four individuals, as you know, to serve on this committee, two Republicans and two Democrats. What will their relationship be to the redistricting master? And what is that redistricting master's job? I so my understanding has been, and I could be wrong here, um, is for the the master to kind of oversee and ensure that I guess things are being fair between the two Republicans and the two Democrats, because I know we're going to be going at it, button heads. <laughs> so that's been my understanding to be the person to kind of come in and, you know, be the mediator uh, between the, those those two Democrats and two Republicans. That's my, my been my understanding. Any work that they have to do beyond that? I, uh, I wouldn't, I'm not familiar with that, would not know. Okay. Um, but I'm pretty sure there's other duties that they would have to do. I'm pretty sure they would have to report back to you guys as well uh, with what is going on between the four uh, individuals on the committee. Thank you. No. Good morning. Hey, hey, hey. Good morning. I want to ask, uh, what is your personal goal in being selected as a member of the redistricting committee? Yeah, to, to make sure that the populations are, are um, balanced here in the Clark County. Um, I, I've been privy to there being some other agendas uh, that's been at play, and those have nothing to do with what uh, the ultimate goal is and to ensure that there is balance amongst all of the districts. Um, and that's that's my goal, is to be fair and to ensure that one, two, three, and four have equal representation. Thank you. Good morning. Hey, good morning. All right. Please describe how your knowledge and experience makes you a qualified candidate for the redistricting committee. Yeah, well, I have a lot of experience with collaboration and working with different teams. Uh, even, you know, some teams that I may not want to work with, you know, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, um, being able to find the middle ground, uh, between what it is that. Uh, you, your team wants and what they, the other uh, team wants, you see, and being able to, uh, when there's an issue that arises, uh, being able to uh, come to some type of common ground. Um, uh, a quick example of that would be when uh, I worked for Symantec. Um, uh, we basically had a difference of opinion on how we should we approach this project. So what I did was that I went and I found some data to back up why our idea was better and, and why that should be the way it is. Now, I know that might not be a thing here on the redistricting committee, um, but always being able to have some data to back up uh, the reasoning behind why you think your opinion is better or why your solution works. Um, so, uh, and then I also, I get along with everybody. So, <laughs> so that's another thing and, uh, and I'm very fair. That's the, that's the other thing, so. 
Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Is it Kamal? Kamal? Is it? Yes, it is. Kamal? Madam okay. <laughs> Sorry. Uh -huh. Okay. Yes. I, I just want to be sure it's pronouncing it right. It, kind of finish up here. This committee is going to meet soon and regularly mm -hmm. and pretty tight deadlines. And so I'm wondering if you're if you have any concerns at all about your time commitment in order to meet these deadlines. No, I do not. Um, you uh, guys on uh, probably are aware I work remotely. Uh, my my um, uh, title is software engineer. So I work from home um, and my schedule is super flexible. Um, I'm actually able to take time off in the morning and finish up my work later uh, in the nighttime, you know, so I can switch up in any way, shape or form uh, uh, to accommodate being on the committee. Okay, well, thank you. I, I think that concludes our, uh, our questions for today and we appreciate you participating. We will, we do intend on making our decision today. And so you'll be hearing from us. <laughs> got you, got you. Do I wait right. now? Do I log off or do I wait? Uh, yeah, you can log off because what we'll do is we'll finish these interviews. Okay. Uh, go into executive session and then come back out into a public meeting and uh, announce um, the the uh, the candidates who will be serving on the committee. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Thank this you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Right. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Uh, mm. Okay. Chair um, and everybody, Chris Green is scheduled for eleven fifteen. Okay. <laughs> yes, and so I'm going to make a quick phone call, but I'll stay right here. I mean, I'll stay right here, but I'm going to make a a phone call so that it's not going to take any fifteen minutes if, or ten minutes. Should be a quick. So be watching. Okay. Thank you.
Good morning, Chris. Can you hear me? Yeah. Are we early? Just, just a few minutes. You're fine, though. Hi, Temple. Thank you. Okay, we're all here and our next applicant is here. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, so, um, what we're going to do, Chris, thank you. 1st of all, for participating in these interviews and also, um, applying to serve on this important committee. Uh, we are going to all ask you a question. I'll follow up with a final question. And uh, so let me begin. Uh, we, you only have 15 minutes for this interview, so just kind of measure your answers uh, so that we get through the interview and all the questions. Although we have been easily doing that. In fact, we're running, we're running ahead. So no worries. Good, Frank. good, good. Okay. So what is your understanding of the scope of the redistricting committee in terms of specific districts you'll deal with? In other words, congressional, County, city, precincts, or uh, all that I've listed. Well, I'm under the impression it's just the county districts redistricting, and I, I believe it's uh, each district no more than two percent. Is that correct? It is county districts. <laughs> yeah, and maybe you know more about the percentages. At at any rate, yes, it's county districts. Thank you. So, a second question. This is Councillor Bowerman. I am asking you about the redistricting master. So, we will select four individuals, as you know, to serve on this committee two Democrats and two Republicans. What will their relationship be to the redistricting master? And then tell us, if you would, what is the redistricting master's job? Um. Well, from my understanding is all four of the committee members that you choose today or tomorrow or, or this week will choose the master and then the master will pretty much run the meetings and help us to determine um, the direction that we need to go into as far as um, redrawing the lines or recalculating the uh, population in each district. And then they'll heal or she'll present that to you folks. And the what plan. is the committee's role then relative to that master? Well, we're there to um, not to guide him because th that person is supposedly going to be a professional who knows a lot more about redistricting than than any of us for probably will ever know. Um, so we're there to kind of oversee and, and talk about the some of the proposals. And if we ourselves have proposals, he can kind of guide us as far as, you know, how do we present that? Thank you, Chris. Good morning, Gary Mevaji here. What is your personal goal in being selected as a member of the redistricting committee? My personal goal is to again be, uh, you know, a service to my my community, and to make sure that everything is done correctly and fairly, and that we um, don't have any unintended consequences um, from redistricting. Uh, and again, just to make sure that the process is played out fairly and equitably for all concerned. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Chris, could you please describe how your knowledge and experience makes you a qualified candidate for the redistricting committee? Yes, I've lived in Clark County for uh, 23 years. Um, I've been active at all levels of city government as well with the police department. The um, 
I've been on the committee for the charter review for the city uh, government, as well as the salary review. Um, I've been uh, involved with the business community for almost 23 years. Um, I've been the president of the East Vancouver Business Association uh, for many of those years, and I'm still very active with that organization. I've been a member of Chamber of Commerce, Rotary. Um, on the school side of things, I was the uh, uh, um, uh, president of the East Bank or the Evergreen School District Foundation got to know a lot of family members, a lot of families in the area. My kids all went through the grade school. Um, I also ran, as you know, uh, for political office four years ago, and <laughs> what an experience that was. I met so many people throughout the county. Uh, so I, I understand a lot of what the county is about, the people, the fabric. And I just want to be able to continue my efforts as being a good steward in my community and, and providing a service to my community that will help, you know, make this whole process a very fair and equitable process. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. You're on. Can't hear you. Here. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. Um, the, the committee uh, is going to need to meet soon and regularly, and I'm just wondering if you have any concerns at all with some time commitment in order to meet the deadlines. Um, not really. I'm an independent business owner. And I make my own schedule. I report to my wife about just about everything else, but um, no, I'll, I'll make myself available. Okay, thank you, Chris. Well, we will be making a decision today after all of these interviews are completed. And once we've done that, you will be notified. So okay. we really appreciate you um, being a part of this process. Yeah, and I hope I get chosen for it. Thank you very much for your efforts okay. and, and your time that you've given us at the same time over the last couple months, so. Okay, thank you so much. Take care. Take care, bye now.
Hi, Chair. Just checking in. Um, Tina's going to double check with Morgan. I'm trying to find out. Okay. okay thank, thank you. you. Here is me again, sorry. Um, I think there may have been an issue with Morgan's email address bouncing back. Um, so Tina was going to uh, resend it. Okay, sorry thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't hear the name. Who has rescinded their application? No, no, no. Oh. No, she said there was a problem with her email address popping oh. back. It was Morgan. Yeah, it bounced back. <laughs> However, we'd be good if we actually can be in touch with these people. So there, I see a phone number on here for Morgan. I just uh, tried yeah, calling she, she's, she's trying right now to uh, join the meeting. So I'm watching for her. Okay, he, thank you. He, I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay. He, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's a gentleman. Sorry about that. Hello, Morgan. Hello. Good morning, Morgan. 
thank you for participating in this uh, application and, and interview process. I'm Clark County uh, Council Chair Eileen Farming O'Brien, and we're all going to ask you a question, and I'll follow up with the final question. So I will begin now. Um, what is your understanding of the scope of the redistricting committee in terms of specific districts that you will deal with? Congressional, county, city, uh, the precincts generally, or uh, all of this list? So my understanding was that it would be um, more about the precinct level committees or districts. Do you wish to expand on that at all? Uh, no, I thought it was, uh, I mean, I definitely, I'm not super familiar with the process. Um, I'll be honest with that. Um, we just got an email that was asking for people if they were available to volunteer. And so, I mean, my assumption would be knowing something about, you know, redistricting processes that um, outside of precincts and maybe local districts, most districting happens at a higher level than the county. So I would think that, you know, so nothing like legislative districts would be reviewed by this committee. And it sounded like from reading um, just the description on the website that this committee is largely involved in appointing someone to draw districts and then reviewing what they've drawn. So that's what I've read. That's a perfect uh, lead in Morgan to your next question, which is uh, we will select four individuals, as you know, two Democrats, two Republicans uh, to serve on this committee. And what will their relationship be to the redistricting uh, master? And what is that redistricting master's job? Yeah. So I would think that the it sounds like the uh, relationship is reviewing um, the potential masters and appointing someone um, or signing off on the appointment of someone and then reviewing their work once they've completed drawing the districts and then it, sending a recommendation along to the county council. Thank you. Morning, Morgan. Gary Mevji here. Thanks for your application and volunteering. Uh, what is your personal goal in being selected as a member of the redistricting committee? So my main goal was just to volunteer. Um, it was something that sounded like you know, there is a call for people to step up, um, and I wanted to. You know, I think I can provide a fair review of any applications for the master and then reviewing of the districts that they draw um you know one that's i hope to be you know um, producing i think what are representative maps of the county thank you good morning uh, Morgan, could you please describe how your knowledge and experience makes you a qualified candidate for the redistricting committee? Sure. Um, so, I do have a little bit of experience with um, the issues of redistricting. So, I, I have a master's degree in political science and in the process of getting that master's degree. Research you know, uh, Morgan, unfortunately, I think that you are breaking up for most of us. Um, so I wonder like perhaps if you tried turning going. off your video, that might help with bandwidth. And I hope you actually heard that. Okay, cool. Yes, and I heard that one. I didn't catch any part of any part of the answer. So I'm sorry, could you repeat what you were answering to Councilor yes, Lentz's absolutely. Question? Sorry about that. Um, no, I was just um, saying I have some experience with um, teaching 
um, political science. So I taught um, American politics at the University of Colorado Boulder, where one of the, and I also taught state and local politics. And one of the things that we do review is the issues that come up with redistricting, questions of you know, community compactness versus representativeness of communities of interest, maybe things like racial and ethnic groups or, you know, ensuring that groups that are just historically underrepresented may ha are not split up um, or potentially giving them opportunities to represent themselves. And so those are the type of, that's the type of background that I would, I think I would bring. Great, thank you. Okay, and the final question here is this committee will be meeting soon and regularly and I'm just wondering if you have any concerns at all with a time commitment in order to meet the deadlines, which are pretty tight. Um, I guess I, I would ask, do we have a, a sense of what time the meetings are going to be held at? Do you know? No, I think the committee will decide that. Okay. Um, I mean, as long as we're able to be flexible, I think I do have a uh, 14 month old daughter. And so, um, you know, sometimes I will be needing to be flexible with time, but I think it sounds like we're able to set our schedule. I have a fairly good idea of what her schedule is and what my work schedule is. So that would be reasonable. Okay. Well, thank you very much. I, thank you, Morgan, for participating again. And uh, we do plan on making our decision today. So uh, we will let you know uh, what the result of, of uh, these interviews are and, and the candidates that we've chosen. Once again, thanks so much for your willingness to be part of this. Yeah, thank you for your time, everybody. Mm -hmm. Sorry about thank the technological you. issue. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> we experience it often. <laughs> Have a great Thank day. Thank you. Bye. You, you too. too. Bye bye. Rebecca? Yes. It had appeared that Juan was on board earlier, but if he is not, uh, is it possible to take a quick two minute break? Yeah, I can be watching for Juan um, and let him know. Yeah, just go ahead, take a couple minutes. Okay, thanks, will do.
I'm going to too. Mr. Gamboa? Yes, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, great. Um, the council is, um, I believe, just about ready, so it'll just be a few seconds, okay? Okay, uh, just a quick question. Do you prefer that I have my video running or does yes. that matter? Yes, right. that would be great. Yeah, hold on, let me move my screen here. So you're looking at me, not the side of me. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, I think we're all back. So, uh, it is still morning. Good morning, Mr. <laughs> Thank you for participating in this and, uh, you know, putting your name forward or 
for for this uh, important committee. We're all five going to I, all four of us are going to ask questions and I'll follow up with a, a final question. So let me begin. Um, what is your understanding of the scope of the redistricting committee in terms of specific districts that you'll deal with? De the congressional, county, city, precincts, or all that I have listed? Uh, as far as I can see right now, I think it's the districts within our, our county. Um, you kind of forgive me a little bit. I'm kind of new to this whole process and uh, uh, basically was asked if I could uh, wanted to participate in this process. Um, so I'm still learning. I've, I've gone in and, and read, you know, the rules for Washington districting and what that entails. I've looked at the map of Clark County, uh, but in a certain way, I'm still kind of green. Okay, I'm going to ask that Mr. Hansen log off and then log back on when this interview is complete. If you would, please. Council requiring, I just moved him to the lobby. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. So, um, I'd just like to say thank you for your uh, informative and, and very personal letter. I felt like I know you after reading that. Um, but your second question is that we will select four individuals, two Republicans and two Democrats, as you know, uh, mm -hmm. to go forward to serve on the committee. What will their relationship be to the redistricting master? And what do you see as the job of that redistricting master? Uh, the my, my relationship and I guess everyone's relationship will be to um, go through, take the information from the census, uh, other data regarding all the districts within the uh, Clark County, and then begin to work on a plan uh, depending on how those districts have changed uh, over the last 10 years, let's say, uh, and create new borders uh, for those particular districts, uh, to put it simply. Uh, Part of what I also see as part of my dealings with not only the Republican and the other um, candidates for these positions is that we'll be sort of negotiating, coming up with a plan, understanding of demographics and certain things that will be part of re, uh, making the changes that will be required. Uh, at this point, I wouldn't know if there's any changes really. Uh, I do know that Clark County has changed in size and demographics have change a little bit, um, but that's what I would foresee uh, my job as being. Thank you. Morning one, Gary Medvici here. Thanks for, I want to add my thanks for you participating. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed reading your letter as well. What is your personal goal in being selected as a member of the redistricting committee? Uh, my personal goal is that as things have changed in Clark County over the last 10 years, uh, that we go ahead and make the changes necessary to reflect uh, what has changed in the demographics and in the population of Clark County over the last few years um, to a point where, uh, let's say, it's going to be fair, uh, but also not going to be taken into account uh, things that are really unrelated, but that, um, you know, I would say even myself and other people would want to do to uh, gain an advantage or, or, or get things going. Uh, my main goal would be that this process becomes as fair as possible by looking at the data, by looking at certain things that reflect uh, Clark County and the people and the districts of it. Um, as I mentioned in my letter, uh, logic is very important to me. Uh, not that I'm completely devoid of emotion, uh, but logic has to persist to create that justice, right? So that would be my goal, sorry. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Could you please describe how your knowledge and experience makes you a qualified candidate for the redistricting committee? Um, yeah, as mentioned in my letter and as mentioned, uh, you know, probably my resume, um, I have no real political background. Uh, but my experiences in, in, in business, uh, working as an engineer, working out in the field with customers, uh, something that I didn't mention in my letter is that my bosses usually have been 3,000 miles away or in another place, another country. Uh, so there's always been a lot of 
having to plan and having to organize and having to see what everybody else needs to do, understanding uh, what people above me wanted uh, from a project or from certain things um, to a point where, you know, I've dealt in with a lot of people in Japan, I've dealt with a lot of people in Europe, um, which I think gives me an experience um, of understanding that not everybody thinks the same way, not everybody deals with things in a certain way, not everybody sees fairness in the same way uh, to a certain extent. Um, so just that experience that, you know, I've always had to manage myself for one, uh, to really work with a lot of other people, understand what their needs and wants are um, to take us to a successful project. I see this redistricting as a project. Uh, if, if that makes any sense, uh, right? Because it has to get done in a certain amount of time. There is a lot of players involved. There is a lot of data and information involved uh, that we just have to make sure that all this coalesces and works. Um, working with the Japanese quite a lot, um, learned over the years that the concept of having consensus, and I've also learned from them that sometimes you can take that uh, way of working things out, uh, can, can get really, really long. Uh, you're never going to reach consensus, but you're going to reach in the, I think in the US and including myself um, personally, I uh, really believe that there's got to be a, a, a goal that we all decide to reach and that's going to be a common ground, but not everybody's going to get everything they want. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and the final question, Juan, is uh, this committee committee needs to meet soon and mm -hmm. and uh, I'm wondering if you have any concerns at all about the time commitment in order to meet the deadlines that you'll have. Uh, there is a concern. Um, to give you a little bit of context, not only do I work at Kokusai, um, not only do I have a, a, a wife and, and kid who's actually going to college this uh, in a couple of weeks, uh, I'll, we're, I'm also part of a, a, a new business starting up, um, and now I got this, and my wife even said, she's like, uh, you're adding a third thing to everything you're doing. Uh, there isn't 25 hours in a day. Uh, but that's been my whole entire career, starting in 1983, um, you know, up to now. It's always been a, a huge, always have to be very cognizant of what, what I need to do, what needs to be taken care of, what uh, meetings I have, what people are expecting of me, um, literally have worked 26, 27 hours in one day to get certain projects done. I got to deal with certain people. Um, if you notice from my resume, uh, I worked at Cisco Systems for about two and a half years. Um, that became an 18 hour a day job. So the first part of the morning, I was dealing with Asia uh, up till about eight. Then I was dealing with the, all the US customers and vendors and everything that we had to deal with. Uh, actually, let me reverse that. The morning was Europe. Um, right, so I was dealing with them. Then during the day, I was dealing with the U.S. customers, and after five, I'm dealing with Taiwan. I'm dealing with a, uh, China. Anybody on that side of the world, um, always constantly in, in a meeting or this or that. We had to get this done. Um, so that's been my entire uh, career. I, as some of my friends have put it, I thrive on that scenario uh, because I'd rather be doing that than be sitting around doing nothing. Okay, thank you. Well, uh, with that in mind, <laughs> I really do appreciate even more the fact that uh, you've stepped forward and want to be a part of this committee. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping you will find the time if you are selected. And uh, so we do intend to make our selection today. So uh, we, you should hear from us uh, mm -hmm. uh, the selection whom we have selected. So uh, that will happen today and we wish you the best. Thank, Thank you, you for participating, Juan. Well, Madam Chair and fellow counselors, I really appreciate your time to interview me and talk to me. Um, really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Take Bye -bye. care. Bye-bye.
Okay, I think if uh, all you counselors would be ready, I think that uh, Lee, Mr. Hansen is probably in the waiting room because I saw him earlier. So, yeah. Good morning, Mr. Hansen. Still morning. Yes. Oh, <laughs> yes. 58, two more minutes. Go. Sorry. Right. <laughs> Check the time. Sorry, I put it in there. I just. No, no, that I, I, that's fine. She, that's fine. We, we, we took care. Of it. <laughs> well, I, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and start up because we are ready, and uh, all of us are going to ask you a question. Okay. Uh, five questions. Uh, you've got 15 minutes for the interview, so uh, just budget your time accordingly. But as you probably know, we're running ahead of time, so there really hasn't been a problem with that. So. I will, I will ask you the 1st question. 1st of all, thank you for being a part of this uh, interview and wanting to be a part of this process. We really appreciate uh, folks stepping up to do this important task. So, I, I, my 1st question is, what is your understanding of the scope of the redistricting committee in terms of specific districts that you will deal with, whether it's congressional, the county, the city? or precincts, or all of those? Uh, wherever I can be of help. Uh, the county, I know the county extremely well. I've lived and worked here for 41 years, so um, I know the district fairly well, but my geological knowledge of the uh, uh, of the Clark County area is, is very good. So from servicing homes and businesses and so forth, so. But I would be willing to work on any anything that I, I can be contribute to. So. Okay, thank you. Circling back on that question for just one moment more. Uh, what is the scope of the authority of that committee as you understand it to be? I'm not sure the scope of the hit me with that again. Uh, the 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 uh, is it congressional? Is it precinct? What what is the scope of authority uh, that that committee deals with? I'm still not following uh, the redistricting. What I understood was basically for Clark County, mm -hmm. and the congressional district is where my concerns are. Um, I kind of was looking around the national stuff too, just to try to get acquainted with it and. Uh, there's a lot of number crunching and a lot of stuff going on, and uh, I would have liked to started reviewing the uh, the data back in May and April when it was supposed to come out. So I've been kind of hunting and looking at estimates, and now I'm just starting to get into some of the data and stuff. So that's not my expertise, but I can uh, handle it. I think. Great, thank you. Well, here's your second question. Um, we will select, as I think you know four individuals, two Republicans, two Democrats to serve on the committee. And what is their relationship to the redistricting master? And what is the job of that redistricting master? That's what I'm one, wanting to find out. I don't know, I'm new to this. Um, I'm a quick learner and I would imagine there's gonna be people there that would be helpful in us new people understanding what they want us to do and how we can best do it. Um, does that answer your question? You bet it does. Thank you. Uh, all right. <laughs> Good morning, Gary Mevici here. I want to thank you too. I, I've read every aspect of your letter and I really appreciate all the sentiments you expressed there. I want to uh, know what is your personal goal in being selected as a member of the redistricting committee? Um, just to volunteer and help. I'm a uh, long time committed resident of the community and I wanna ensure that it moves forward in the, the best possible light, I would be the way I would describe it. So anything I could do to volunteer in this, when I first started looking into this, no one was talking about it. Um, I'd go to the Republican party meetings and ask people about it nobody and then all of a sudden it just exploded and all this information and everything so i'm just interested in helping the com my community so and i know that there's dark forces that would probably like to gerrymandering i think is the word for it and uh 
I kind of want to be looking to make sure that doesn't happen. So. Good morning, or Hi. now it's afternoon. Um, <laughs> could you please describe how your knowledge and experience makes you a qualified candidate for the redistricting committee? Um, first of all, I'm very honest. Um, second of all, I know a lot of people in the community personally as my customers for 30 years, a lot of them. So I got to know them, their families, um, concerns. Um, and then, I, like I said, my geological knowledge of our county, I probably had my boots in more places than it, as many as anyone. So that gives me a little bit of a um, background, I guess I would explain. So I know I've been to houses where you'd never know the houses exist. So from mansions to little old ladies to everything in between. And uh, love my job, love my customers, and uh, want to protect my community. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? <laughs> yeah, one final question. Um, the committee will be meeting soon and regularly. And I'm wondering if you have any concerns uh, about the time commitment in order to meet the, these quick deadlines. Um, not really, I'm real flexible. I've been shut down from since COVID came and I just kind of semi-retired. So I'm just slowly opening my business again. So I'm really flexible as long as I know what the schedule is. So. All right, great. Well, I, we, I, again, I thank you for your uh, willingness to participate in this process. And we do uh, plan on making a decision today and so that decision will uh, we'll hear about that decision later today or tomorrow, whatever, but, but our decision will be made today. So once again, I just want to thank you for taking time, your willingness to uh, be a part of yeah. the uh, process. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm glad to volunteer. Um, and I think there's at least two other people on this that are applicants that I'm really comfortable with. Um, I'm, I'm hoping one of them that you select will be very good with data, mining and mastering, and I'm sure that's a big uh, uh, part of it. And uh, I'd be willing to work with either, any of the people that you select in any capacity I can help. So, and I've let them know that. So, I'll, you know, whoever, pick the best two that you got. Okay. <laughs> thank you so much, Mr. All right, thank, you. thank you. Take care. Thanks for what you guys do. Uh -huh. okay. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Is uh, the next candidate in the lobby? Uh, have they signed in? Do we know? Nobody in the lobby at this time. It's scheduled uh, for 12.15 with Sean. He does have a phone number. Might give him a call. You guys need me to check out of here, or should I? I can't hear you. Yeah, you have to learn yes. to read lips. Yes, <laughs> right. <laughs> sorry. Yes, go ahead. <laughs> I'm sure you don't want I'm me so to use up the, You want me to yeah. use up the rest of my time? I did that too quick. <laughs> no, no, you're fine. Actually, you gave a nice final statement there. All right, All right. thank you. Appreciate thank you. it. You All take bye. care. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.
Okay, Chair. Um, Sean is logging on as we speak. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. While he's doing that, um, Rebecca or Tina, do we have to wait until um, twelve fifteen to go? Uh, excuse me, twelve thirty to go into our executive session, or can we go? You can go whenever you're finished with. Okay, uh, great. Thank you. You're welcome. Is there a time certain that we take action afterwards or can it just flow whenever? Rebecca or Tina? Oh, no, you can just um, log back onto this meeting. We'll keep it open. So okay, that's, that's any, any time, not a time certain. Not a time certain. Okay, great. great. Thank you. <clears throat> Hello. Hello. Hello, Hello Mr. Sean. Prescott. Yes, ma'am. This is Mr. Prescott. Here we are. Okay. Wow. I see Cisco <laughs> okay. products are just as worthless as they've always been. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes, okay. Well, welcome. Um, thank you. This thank is, you. Um, this, uh, this is Eileen Quirino O'Brien, Council Chair. And uh, yes, thank you, first of all, for being a part of this process. We are all going oh, to ask sure. you questions, and uh, you're going to have 15 minutes for this interview. So budget your time accordingly. Although we have gone, uh, you know, we. It's been very easy to make that time. So, uh, sure. We, we will go ahead and I'll start with the first question. And that is, would you, uh, what is your understanding of the scope of the redistricting committee in terms of specific districts that the committee will deal with? Is it congressional, county, city, precincts, or all that I have listed? Okay, well, according to Washington State, um, we have, uh, we'll be dealing with the uh, congressional, uh, and we're going to be dealing with all the counties in the third district. So we've got uh, 10 congressional, 49 uh, legislatives, uh, all of which have to be redrawn by a bipartisan commission due to uneven populated, population growth. Uh, and so we have overpopulated districts that will shrink and underpopulated districts that will expand. This occurs once every 10 years based on census data. And it's a reappointment um, and so that we can reappoint 435 seats in the House of Representatives and so on and so forth. Does that answer your question adequately? Uh, I think so. Um, if that is your understanding of what this redistricting committee is assigned to do. Yes, from what I understand about redistricting in, the, in Washington State, I've been studying this for 48 hours. So. Um, okay. I've got uh, RCW 44.05, um, and I'm just kind of going through it, just looking at what the uh, laws are. Okay. Thank you so much. 
Your second mm -hmm. question is that we will select four individuals, as you know, to serve on the committee, two Republicans, two Democrats. And what will their relationship be to the redistricting master? And then follow that up, if you would, please, by describing the job of the redistricting master. Okay. So, um, we are a bipartisan commission and we will work with the master to uh, redistrict, to re-outline uh, what the uh, commission's chairperson, the master, um, will be guiding us to do. So, uh, we're, we basically serve at the behest of the master, but we have to have a bipartisan commission to ensure that there is no uh, gerrymandering occurring. Is that an adequate explanation? Thank you very much. Hi, Sean. This is Gary Mevji. Thank you for participating. I'm going to follow Karen Bowerman's question. Uh, what is your personal goal in being selected as a member of the redistricting committee? Mm, okay. So, now yeah, that's a good question. So there's a lot of meat there. Um, well, uh, I'm 42 and uh, I've watched, uh, nothing personal, but I've watched the boomers just hand this country over. And uh, my personal goal is to uh, retake it uh, back. So I want to ensure that we have adequate representation uh, in, in Washington, D.C. Uh, representation that is a reflection of what our actual district's political ideologies are. Um, which nothing personal, but the state of Washington, I believe, is grossly uh, inaccurately represented. Uh, we have um, we have some real house cleaning to do, and so my goal is to oversee it. Uh, I am uh, incredibly practical. I'm a local business owner. I'm in. I've been in construction for over a quarter century, and uh, I just want to make sure that. Uh, well, I just want to make sure that we're not actually creating districts that aren't accurate representations of what the uh, political agenda of said districts are, which is exactly how, you know, the Republicans reshaped the landscape in, in, through the 90s uh, into the early 2000s, and then the Democrats picked up uh, and started doing it the same. I mean, I think uh, Americans need to come to they need to come to grips with the fact that both parties are now the establishment party. And um, I just want to make, I, I'm a third party guy, you know, I've always been. So that's what I'm here to make sure that this is not going to be a horrible gerrymandering experience where we won't have adequate representation. And, yeah, I'm sorry. Next question yeah. is, Please describe how your knowledge and experience makes you a qualified candidate for the redistricting committee. Uh, who am I speaking to? Councillor Lentz. Ah, thank you. Um, and could you please repeat the question, Councillor? Please describe how your knowledge and experience makes you a qualified candidate for the redistricting committee. Um, okay. My knowledge and experience. Um, well, uh, I have no experience redistricting. I've been studying politics, economics, and history for uh, multiple decades. Um, I have literally physically built cities. Um, I am um, an expert at um, troubleshooting, uh, management, and um, critical thinking. So. Just the fact that I am somebody who's under the age of 50 that's actually interested in the process should be more than enough, uh, you know, uh, qualification, i.e. I, I, I've seen whom I'm up, to, up against uh, locally, and no one has any experience. So um, I'm a master critical thinker. Uh, I'm quickly uh, getting through 44.05 of the RCW. Uh, and, uh, I, I have literally physically built cities, literally physically. 
and I understand what gerrymandering is. It's how we manipulate representation, and it can and, and it can work either for the people or against the people. So, other qualifications that I have is I can read. Uh, electrical code is written exactly like a law. I'm incredibly familiar with both legal system and electrical code. I've represented myself multiple times in court. Um, and um, I'm a team player. So um, my experience is in management of people, uh, management of incredibly complex, incredibly large projects where hundreds of millions of dollars are on the line with major timelines and huge ramifications for failure. Um, and again, a master troubleshooter, master critical thinker, master strategist. I read Art of War the first time when I was 12. So uh, those are my qualifications. Great, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Okay, uh, Mr. Prescott, the last question we have for you is, uh, this committee will need to meet soon and regularly. And do you have any concerns with the time commitment in order to meet the deadlines? Um, I work for myself. Um, I, I am beholden to no one but God. So I make my own uh, schedule. And um, I have no problem if you guys want to turn this into a part-time or full-time job. It's fine. This is our civic duty. You know, I mean, everyone should be involved in politics. Okay. And it, it is, it is, it is a full-time job. I get it, you know. But what's that saying? How's that saying go? It takes a village, you know. I don't have children. My wife is very understanding, and I work for myself. So, uh, really, I make my own schedule. Okay. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate you being a part of this process. And um, we are going to make our decision today. Uh, in fact, we're going to go into executive session after uh, the conclusion of this interview. Then we'll come back out into a public meeting and announce the um, the candidates that have been selected for the committee. So once again, I just want to thank you for being part of this process. Oh yeah, it's my civic duty. I mean, I appreciate your acknowledgement, you know, I thank you folks for being a part of uh, the process. Uh, I mean, we have to take the nation back and, it's, you know, it's, it's going to require a lot of effort on everyone's part. And I remember when civics, I remember hearing stories of when civics was a novelty, you know, and just now everyone's lost their minds. So hopefully you pick me because uh, you guys have a major issue here in Clark County. So we need to resolve that immediately. Okay, thank, thank you. you so much. Goodbye. Peace be with Goodbye. you. Mm -hmm. thank Bye. Bye-bye. With that, we are going to move out of this meeting, go in, sign into our executive session and start a discussion. See you over there. Uh, meeting again um, for us to uh, select these committee members and I am going to uh, ask for a motion first from uh, Councilor Lentz. Uh, Chair, I move to nominate John Anderson for the first of the two Democratic positions. Okay, John Anderson, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. No. 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 Councilor Bowerman. On the uh, Republican side, I nominate Juan Gamboa. I will second that, Madam Chair. It's been moved and seconded to appoint uh, Juan Gamboa to the redistricting committee on the Republican side. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All abstain. Okay. Motion passes. Uh, sure. Um, I move to nominate Janet Landisberg. And I second that. Two. 
It's been moved and seconded to appoint Janet Landisberg. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Medvedi. Uh, I would make a motion, Madam Chair, to uh, nominate or to elect Camel Richards to the uh, position, second position for the Republicans. Second that. Been moved and seconded. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Abstain. Oh. Opposed. Opposed. Okay. Councilor Lance. Uh, yes, I'm unmuted. Um, I move to nominate uh, Morgan Holmgren for one of the two Democrat positions. I'll second that. It's been moved and seconded to appoint Morgan Holmgren um, to the committee. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Councilor. Uh, um, I'm thinking because I believe we have two Republican representatives at this point. We have Juan Gamboa and Kamal Richards. Is that not correct? No, that's not correct. You voted no. That's two to two. Wait, there abstain. one abstention. Yes. Still have to have three. Ah. Oh. I uh, wish to nominate on the Republican side, Lee Hansen. Could we pause one second just to make sure the lawyer on board? Because that was my impression too, that you needed three. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, by just yeah. plurality, two to one, uh, it, I mean, Kamal Richards would have taken, but I don't know that there's a special rule that requires uh, the majority of, so can, can we get an answer before we vote on an, another person? I, I think that's a, a very good question. If, if we could take break. just a quick break and let me check and get right back to you one sec. Leslie comes back exactly what the rules are for abstaining. So I, I don't understand your abstentions. Uh, Councillor Lance, you were in on the uh, interviews and so. I, I, I would uh, like my reasoning for abstaining is uh, that in the prior. Uh, meetings getting to this point of approving lists and everything. I abstained from those discussions of approving the candidates. So to maintain that consistency, I'm abstaining from uh, voting on these on these candidates. Yeah, and, I think that so was I, a totally appreciate... different issue, though. It was a different issue, I thought, but apparently not. I don't know that that. I need to have more of an explanation than that. I'm choosing to abstain. Yeah, and so, so this is an executive. So I, I, but in full disclosure, I mean, I, I had this, I sent a, an email to Temple asking if she really needed to abstain. I mean, I don't know of any rule, but certainly I respect uh, your position and decision. Well, um, just a thought. <laughs> if the reason for abstaining is because it is of an opposite political party, no, that's not it. Because my reason for abstaining is to remain consistent with my votes related to approving the lists of members. And I chose to abstain from that discussion. Uh, because I share some of the concerns about how all of it went forward and I, I will leave it there since we aren't in executive. Uh, but to remain consistent with my decision not to vote on approving the list of Republican names. I am choosing to abstain from voting on the Republican candidates. 
Okay. Well, what I was thinking was it's very fortunate that the Republicans are not abstaining from voting for the Democrats or we would have a real problem. Sure would. But again, since I chose okay. not to vote on no. the first list, yeah, this is to maintain consistent in my voting. Okay, thank you. Let's assist. Council, we're just about there. Uh, I'm just one more moment. Be right back. So as we discussed earlier, the need for charter detail, <laughs> this would be a, a good point to throw in some process, some procedure, you know, discussing what constitutes a quorum to have the meeting and then what constitutes a successful vote. I mean, uh, usually very, very basic rules. Okay, thank you for your patience. Um, yes, so there were, this is in regards to the vote on Kamal Richards, correct? And um, there were two yeses, one no and one um, abstention, correct? Yes. So because there were uh, three people voting, and two said yes and one said no, it passes. Okay, thank you. I think that concludes our, um, our need to do any more nominations. So the, just to restate who the members of the committee will be, Janet Landisberg and Morgan Holmgren, representing the Democrat Party and um, Kamal Richards and Juan Gamboa representing the Republican Party. Okay. All right. Thank you all very much for your time. I know it's valuable. <laughs> all right. Take care, everyone. Take care. Mute. See you tonight. Six yeah, o'clock. That's right. <laughs> Six o'clock. And it's raining outside. It's really nice. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.